Well, turn with me to Isaiah chapter 54. Isaiah chapter 54. I'm going to talk to you for just a few moments about something that I think it's kind of right there on the surface of where we are in our thinking is how, about how to acquire protection for your family in dangerous times. How to provide protection for your family during dangerous times. Protection for our family. I'm going to use, how to learn how to use the weapons that God's called us and how not to yield to fear when the pressure's on. Isaiah chapter 54, look at verse 13. And all your children shall be taught by the Lord, and great shall be the peace of your children. In righteousness you shall be established. How many know if you're established in righteousness, you know God's not mad at you? You know that you're the right, in right standing with God. You know that your sins have been cast as far as the east is from the west, never to be remembered against you again. In righteousness, you shall be established. You shall be far from oppression. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? Our oppression is the pressure that comes from the enemy. Oppression is the enemy coming in trying to steal the word. And the Bible says that spirit of oppression, you'll be far from it because you're established in righteousness. For you shall not fear. And from terror, for it shall not come near me. To come near you or come near me. Say that after me. In the name of Jesus, terror shall not come near me. You know, Psalms 91 says a thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it won't come near you. We got more than one scripture for this, folks. And so we've got a right to be established in righteousness. You got to be established in righteousness because when dangerous times come, you keep, you, you have to, you got that thought in your mind. Well, maybe God won't help me because I thought a bad thought or I didn't please him in this. I've not prayed enough. I've not fasted enough. Or maybe I'm not some super duper Christian. If you're born again, you've been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Can you say praise God? Hallelujah. Indeed, verse 15, they shall surely assemble, but not because of me. He's talking about enemies now. Whoever assembles against you shall fall for your sake. He said, they're going to assemble against you, but I didn't cause them to do that. Verse 16, behold, I've created the blacksmith who blows the coals in the fire, who brings forth an instrument for his work, and I have created the spoiler to destroy. Now, that what he's talking about here is, that the spoiler, the destroyer, is Satan. The enemy is Satan and all of his demons in the kingdom of darkness. And God says, theologically, let me explain this to you. I created Satan, but I created him Lucifer. And when he, iniquity was found in him, and he said, I will be like the Most High, he fell. Jesus said, I beheld Satan falling like lightning from the heaven." And when he fell, it was, it was bad news. And we're not going, we can't, we don't have time to get into all that. Just know this. I created Lucifer. Lucifer had iniquity found in him. He's the destroyer. But listen to me. I'll take care of him. Don't worry about him. I didn't create him to hurt you because the next verse says that no weapon that the destroyer forms against you shall prosper. And every tongue which rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. I've got news for you today. Yes, there is a Lucifer out there. Yes, there's a destroyer out there. But the Bible says that no weapon formed against you will prosper. In other words, the devil's firing blanks. All he's got is lies. He can't touch you. You will be far from oppression because you're righteous. You're in the secret place of the Most High God. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand. You don't be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the pestilence that walks in noonday. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a covenant of protection, and we have the right to pray that protection over our family. That's good, that's good news, isn't it? That's good news. 
So how do you, how do you, how do you deal with these things? Well, first of all, no weapon formed against you can prosper. Now look with me at 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Did you bring your Bible? I didn't get to preach to you last week. I didn't get to do Wednesday night Bible study, so we're going to have Sunday morning Bible study today. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. When you find it, say amen. amen. If you don't find it, just don't worry. Just, here's it. Sometimes it's, it, the preacher preaches real quick. You just take your, an, a piece of paper and you write down the scripture. Then you look up here. Doesn't Lauren and, and the team do a good job making sure the scriptures are up there? <laughs> Have you visited? <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, I visit some big churches, man. They don't do the, what we do up here. I just think it's awesome. And so sometimes what you can do is you can just write the scripture down, look up there, and then you can look them up in your own Bible and underline them and, make no, and study them when you get home. That's a, that's a good way to do it. Uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 13, no temptation is overtaken you except as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you're able, but with the temptation will also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. You know what that means? Every weapon the devil uses against you, it won't prosper. And he said the, te- the weapons he uses, they're common. And they're common to men. There's nothing super duper dark about it. It's Satan being controlling and manipulating people with lies. And then he flows through people to try to get to you. But know this. Every weapon they use is common. But let me show you some good news. While the devil is limited to common weapons, the common weapons that come through flesh and blood, look with me at 2 Corinthians 10, verse 3. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 3. It says, For though we walk in the flesh... We do not war according to the flesh. The flesh is your five physical senses, what you can see, smell, taste, touch, feel. For though we walk in the five physical senses, we don't war according to the five physical senses. For the weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal. You know what he's saying? The weapons of our warfare are not common to man. (laughs) They're not carnal, but mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. Now, what are the strongholds? Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing every thought into captivity by the, uh, to the obedience of Christ. So the devil has common weapons. The weapons of our warfare, they're not common and they're not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. You know what makes them do that? We've got the word of Almighty God. It's the sword of the Spirit. I don't know if I'll get a chance to get that scripture, but know this. The Bible calls this book a sword. We take the word of God and we bring captive every thought because the strongholds the devil tries to keep you bound in are the lies he tells you and they find a place in your mind. But you take the truth of God's word and you go against the lies of the devil and you take those thoughts captive and you say, that is not my thought. This is what my thought is. With his stripes I'm healed. Amen. This is what my thought is. If I trained up my child in the way that she, is it, when the way they should go, when they're old, they'll not depart. You take the word of God and instead of think, thinking those terrible, fearful thoughts, you say, that is not my thought. And you say out loud, this is what the word says. With his stripes, I'm healed. This is what the word of God says. No weapon formed against me can prosper. So while the devil is limited to common fleshly weapons, And every one of them are lies. Our weapons are not carnal because they're mighty through God. Because it's the word of God. It's the breath of God. The Bible says the word of God is holy men of old were moved upon by the Holy Spirit, inspired by the Holy Spirit. 
And God breathed on them. And when you open up this book right here, you're opening up the very breath of God. And you take this word and you hide it in your heart and you speak it out your mouth and you take thoughts captive and bring your thought life into alignment with God's thoughts. Hallelujah. So how do we do that? Number one, take advantage of angelic protection. Take advantage of angelic protection protection. Turn to Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2. And let's start reading in verse 5. For he has not put the world, for he has not put the world to come of which we speak in subjection to the angels, But one testified in a certain place saying, what is man that you're mindful of him or the son of man that you can take care of him? You have made him a little lower than angels. You have crowned man with glory and honor. I want to speak to all people of the human species. Would you raise your hand? You are crowned. Just touch your head. Just kind of like. You're crowned with glory and honor. That's why the devil, that's why the devil specializes in addiction to getting you where you're chemically dependent upon a drug. You get chemically dependent upon a substance, chemically dependent on something until all of a sudden it controls your life and and controls your thought life. Ladies and gentlemen, you're crowned with glory and honor. When you see the videos of downtown Philadelphia of people just stuck there with the fentanyl and the heroin running and the opioids running through their veins, just sitting there, just the mess and the filth and the trash that they're in. It's the only, it's the devil's biggest blow against God because we're made in God's image and we're made after his likeness and we've been crowned with glory and honor and he takes great delight in taking God's creation and making him bound up like that. But how many of you know this church has the answer to addiction? You have the answer to people being bound with drugs and alcohol and pornography. You have the answer. His name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He will set Set people free by the power of Almighty God. Hey, folks, if he can heal cancer, he can heal the chemical imbalance and the dopamine uh, the deprivation in a man's brain and bring him back into alignment where he finds joy in the Lord. He finds peace that passes all understanding. He finds joy unspeakable and full of glory. Can you say amen? I speak to addiction. I speak to every bondage and I speak to every person in your family that's bound with drugs and alcohol right now in the name of Jesus. Be free in Jesus' name. I loose you right now. I take the words of my mouth and I declare freedom over your family, freedom over your loved ones, freedom over your children and your children's children. And if you're in this room right now and you're bound and you're addicted, I've got good news for you. He who the Son has set free has been made free indeed. Can somebody give God your best shout right now? Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Look at Psalms chapter 8. That wasn't in my notes. I just, but this Hebrews 2 is quoting Psalms chapter 8. Oh, repasite. Look at verse 3. When I consider the heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained. Could you see the angels maybe doing that? The angels have been here from the beginning. And all of a sudden God stood out on nothing. So this planet, it was dark and full of vo- and void. The Holy Spirit hovered upon the water and God said, let there be light. And light was. And then God formed, after he made, after he made this planet to be self-sustaining until God destroys it with fire. That's why it's a lie 
and a demonic deception to think that this planet will run out of anything. Are you listening to me? By the way, look it up. They're not even fossil fuels. Fossils don't turn to oil. They turn into rock. Have you noticed that? There's nobody's like, what are we doing? Pumping well, we messed up all the oil wells today. We had some fossil bones get stopped, stopped up the well. Come on, folks. It's all man-made, man-manipulated to get mankind to worship and take care of this planet rather than worship the living God and taking care of one another. The people that take this whole green thing, they actually hate humans. That humans are a parasite on this planet and need to be eliminated. That's why we need to kill your babies before they're born. That's why we got to eliminate the old people because they have to have quality of life and all these lives of the devil. That's why we've got to have population control because we're running out. Hey, folks, get in an airplane one time and fly from here to California and look out the window. Are you listening to me? Get in your car and drive across Texas. It'll take you all day long and you still won't be there. And you may run into five people in Dallas, and after that, ain't nobody. <laughs> Tumbleweeds. <laughs> Tumbleweeds and beef jerky stores. That's all that's out there. And oil wells pumping out that black gold. Texas tea. It's a lie, folks. It's a lie. So go recycle your plastic bottles so they can sell it back to China so China can dump it in the ocean. How dumb can you get and still breathe? See, man's going to worship something. Oh, listen to me. But we got fire-breathing evangelists being raised up in this church telling them that God loves them and has a wonderful plan for their life in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Isn't God good? Isn't he well? He lo- we love him so much. There's an angel stood up there and says, what is, when I consider the heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which, ha- which you have ordained, and then I look at man, what is man? That you are mindful of him. And the son of man, that you visit him. You've made him a little lower than the angels. Now there's a marginal reference in my Bible next to the word angels, and you go down there and it says the word Elohim. Do you know where you see the word Elohim? Genesis 1, 1, in the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. When he made man, he made man a little lower than God himself. Hey, listen to me. And you have been crowned with glory and honor, and you have, and you have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands, to put all things under your feet, all sheep and all oxen, even the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea that pass through the paths of the sea. My wife uses that scripture to direct hurricanes. How many know hurricanes go through the paths of the sea? And God can direct the paths of the sea. Oh, Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. We were created in God's class, and angels were created below us. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 1, real quick, Hebrews 1, 13 and 14. I'll, I'll read it from the screen up here for the sake of time. Hebrews 1, 13 and 14. But to which of the angels said he at any time, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies a footstool? He never said that to them. Are they not all ministering spirits? Sent forth to minister for those who will inherit salvation. You have, you were created in God's image. You were created in God's likeness. When man fell, he fell big time and Satan became the God of this world. But Jesus Christ came in a man suit, the man, the man that lost it. But Jesus had no sin in his body and he was 100% man, 100% God. And he paid the price for man to go back to his place, seated together with Christ in the heavenly places at the right hand of majesty on high. We're not just a little bit like Jesus on the inside. You're exactly like Jesus on the inside. You are 
Hallelujah. He gave you power. He gave you dominion. He gave you authority. And he created angels for you to take your mouth and tell them what they're supposed to do according to the word of Almighty God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Look at Psalms 103, verse 20. Psalms 103, verse 20. We're talking about dominion people that have angels at their beck and call. Bless the Lord, you his angels who excel in strength, who do his word, heeding the voice of his word. So what voice is he heeding? They're heeding, angels heed the voice of the word. Who has the word in their heart and who has the word coming out their mouth? Us born again children of the most high God that have the authority to speak it. So you have the right to say, angels, you go take care of this. Angels, you, oh, glory to God, you are encamped around about me because we fear you in the name of the Lord. As a matter of fact, look at Psalms 34 verses 4 through 7. Psalms 34 verses 4 through 7. I sought the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me from all my fears. How I many you can preach right there? <laughs> Look at this next one. The Lord looked to him and were radiant. They looked to him and they were radiant and their faces were not ashamed. Look at the next one. This poor man cried out and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord and camps all around those who fear him and delivers them. I wish you could see. There was a, there was a moment in time at the revival last week in Arkansas with the praise and worship person. I had her up there singing the blessing song and she was up there and she was singing and all of a sudden she falls down to her knees and begins to look and she saw and up there there was a a, walk, a walkway that goes around the entire sanctuary with classrooms on this side. And she saw that whole place just filled with angels as the people begin to worship and praise God. You know what they're waiting on? They're waiting on you to tell them what to do. My wife does not, we do not leave the house until my wife says, Lord God, we plead the blood of Jesus over this house and we put the angels in charge of the house while we're gone. We put the angels in charge of this house, of this car where we go in the front and the back, the top and the bottom all the way around and we're going to arrive to the other side where we need to go. We thank you for that. She prayed that over every person in this church during that hurricane. I did too. The angels were there. Can you say praise God? Hallelujah. Look at Psalms 34. Excuse me, we just did that. And in Daniel 6, 22, there was, the, there was the angel there. And they put Daniel in the lion's den. And Daniel went to sleep. And the angel of the Lord came and shut the mouths of the lions while David was asleep. Can somebody say amen? Look at Exodus 23, 20. Exodus 23, 20. Don't you just love the word of God? He, this, is, this is Moses talking to the, he's talking to the children of Israel about what their journey is going to be like as they leave Egypt. He said, behold, I send an angel before you to keep you in the way and to bring you into the place which I have prepared. It says, beware of him, obey his voice, do not provoke him, for he will not pardon your transgression, for my name is in him. What does that mean? Basically, he says, you, you, you're going to have to do what the Word says. You, you, you can't just do your own thing willy-nilly and expect the angel to make up the slack of your disobedience, is what he's trying to say. Where did I get to? Verse 21. Look at verse 22. But if you indeed obey his voice and do what I speak, then I will be an enemy to your enemies and an adversary to your adversaries. For my angel will go before you and bring you to the Amorites, the Hittites, the Perzites, the Canaanites, the Hivites, the Jebusites, the Indian Riverites, the Brevardites, the Orange Countyites. I will cut them off. You shall not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor do according to their works. But you shall utterly overthrow them and completely break down their sacred pillars. So you shall serve the Lord your God and he who he, that angel he. You shall serve the Lord your God and the angel will bless your bread and your water. And God says, I will take sickness away 
from the midst of you. So the angel will bless your bread and your water and God will take sickness away from the midst of you. How do you protect your family? You get the angels in charge. and You tell them to take care of your family. Hallelujah. Number two, second weapon that you have to protect your family in dangerous times is listen to your spirit. Listen to your spirit. John 16, 32, John 16, 13. John 16, 13 says the spirit of truth will lead you and guide you into all things. So you have a spirit on the inside of you if you're born again. And that spirit is the spirit of truth. And he will guide you. Just make this confession. I am guided. guided. Not by my feelings. I am guided. Not by my fears. I'm guided by the Holy Spirit. I call that Holy Spirit the inward witness, the inward leading, the voice of God in Jesus' name. Look at Isaiah 30, 21. Isaiah 30, 21. Hallelujah. Your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. Whenever you turn to the right hand or whenever you turn to the left, you have a voice on the inside of you. He said, go, this is the way. You know what that, this is the way is? That's the peace of God. That peace of God lets you know while you're walking, this is the way. This is the way. It doesn't look like the way, but this is the way. I know it doesn't look, it doesn't look like the best way, but this is where the peace leads me. This is the way, walk in it. And how many of you know, when you take a wrong step, he'll go, that's not the way. This is the way. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Aren't you glad for that? You have that whole inward witness on the inside of you. Colossians 3, 15 and 16 says that let the peace of God rule in your hearts and your minds. Let that peace of God rule in your hearts and minds where you've been called in one body and be thankful. How many know if you're thankful, you're not complaining? complaining will keep you from hearing the peace. If you complain, you remain. If you rejoice, it changes everything. Look at the next verse. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. How many know you're at a a church this morning that's preaching the word to you richly? And you're going to let this word dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns, spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. How I many, if you're thankful, it means you're excited and you've got a hope and you're, you've got a song in your heart. Everything's going to be all right. I've got a feeling everything's going to be all right. Oh. I think, I, I think you're right. I believe you. Hallelujah. we got a choir right over here. Hallelujah. One more time. Oh, I love it. So no weapon formed against you can prosper. What tools do you have? You have the angelic protection. You have the voice of the Holy Spirit leading and guiding you. Number three, the last one. Pleading the blood of Jesus over your family every day. Pleading the blood of Jesus over your family every single day. Look at Exodus chapter 12. Exodus chapter 12. We're going to explain what pleading the blood means. Pleading the blood is a legal matter. It's not like you're pleading like, oh, please, 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 please. There's no faith in that. It's like a lawyer pleading your case. Presenting your evidence. Based on the evidence, this is why the blood should work in this situation. The blood paid for this. The blood provided this. And we invoke the blessing that was provided by the blood on the, on, and the protection of my family right now. There's been nine plagues that have gone through the land. But God says that's something, there's something different about this next plague. The firstborn of everybody in Egypt will be killed. And the firstborn of their stock the livestock, the firstborn of their animals, 
But when I see the blood, something's going to be different about them. Exodus 12, 22 says, And you shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that's in the basin of that lamb. And strike the lintel on the two side posts with the blood that's in the basin. And none of you shall go out of the door of that house until morning. For the Lord will pass through and strike the Egyptians. And when he sees the blood on the lintel on the two door posts, the, the Lord will pass over the door. And not allow the destroyer, I mean, if the devil, thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He will not allow the destroyer to come into your house to strike you. And you shall observe his thing as an ordinance, ordinance for you and your sons forever. It shall come to pass when you come to the land which the Lord give you. Just as he promised that he will keep this service. And it shall be that when your children say, what do these things mean by this service, this Passover service? Then you'll begin to tell them about this Passover sacrifice that happened that day. The blood of Jesus keeps the destroyer away. The blood of the lamb kept the destroyer away. And they would go and they would take the, the blood and they'd put it upon the two side, po the two side posts and the top part. And those people that were inside that room where the blood was covering and they're inside eating the lamb that's been roasted in fire. I mean, this is a type and shadow of Jesus Christ being the lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. How many know being here is, is in the secret place of the most high? How many know eating that, that lamb is a type of us eating the broken body and drinking the shed blood of the Lord Jesus around the communion table? And God says, when I see that, I'll not let the destroyer come into them. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I don't have a bowl of Jesus' blood. How do you plead the blood of Jesus? You do it by faith. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8, that, that Moses, by faith, kept the, keep the shedding of the blood and the Passover. So Moses did it by faith. And even though Moses and his children of Israel had a bowl of blood, even though they had the branch of hyssop, even though they could feel the blood running down their elbow while they did that, even though they had lamb still stuck in their teeth from that covenant meal, they still had to do it by faith. We're a faith people under this new covenant. Can you say amen? And faith is found in two places. Anybody know where those two places are? In your heart and coming out your mouth. Romans 10, verse 8, 9, and 10 so it tells us that's how we get saved. With the heart, man believeth unto salvation. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Ladies and gentlemen, faith is found in your heart. And faith is found coming out your mouth. Now look at Revelation chapter 12. Glory to God. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. All the songs we sang today are just preaching my sermon today. And they overcame him, the devil, by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives unto death. And so they may not have had a bowl of Jesus' blood, but they had faith in that blood. And they applied it by faith, by saying, I plead the blood of Jesus over Matthew. I plead the blood of Jesus over Jason. And I declare that no weapon formed against them can prosper. I, my mom was all the time drawing a blood circle around the property. I draw a blood circle right now around this piece of property right now. And I declare the devil can't cross the bloodline because inside that bloodline is the glory of Almighty God. Devil, take your hands off this property. Devil, take your hands over 6825 Baptist. Cock Street, take your hands and you call your address out to the Lord. And folks, when you plead the blood of Jesus, the destroyer has to pass you by. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you because you're in the secret place of the Most High God. This blood works when you speak it out your mouth. Make much of the blood, says the Lord. Make much of the blood, says the Lord. Your blood, blood, the blood paid for your salvation. The blood was the price for you to walk 
in me and me walk in you. The blood was the price for your sins to be cast as far as the east is from the west, never to be remembered against you no longer. Make much of the blood because when you make much of the blood, you're reminding yourself that I am protected not because of my good behavior, not because of all the rules that I've kept, but I'm protected because my faith is in the work of the blood of Christ Jesus that was shed for me. And when your faith is in covenant and you talk covenant and you live the covenant, there's no weapon formed against you can prosper, saith the Lord. Oh, re pasi din Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> All through the Bible, you see the blood being applied. After 40 years of wandering around, the children of Israel were going to take over Egypt. But the first place they had to come to was a place called Jericho. So they went and spied out Jericho. And they found a harlot. Her name was Rahab the harlot. How many know you're in for a rough life when your name is Rahab the harlot? <laughs> uh, Miss Harlot, could you have a table ready for you? It's, it's a rough name. She said, but I saw. 40 years ago, we saw the, we saw the Red Sea open up. We saw the pillar of fire and the cloud and our hearts melted within us. We thought you were coming right then, and now 40 years later, here you are. She says, here's what I'm going and they, and they came looking for the spies. She hid them amongst her stuff. Now, the Bible says that Rahab the harlot lived on the wall of Jericho. They said, tradition says six chariots could run, have chariot races around the top of that wall big, thick wall. There ain't nobody coming around. And so she's going to let these spies go back over there and report to them. And so she opens up the window. And she's letting those boys down in a basket with a red rope. And only a woman would have thought of this. When she had them hanging there between her window and the ground, she says, oh, by the way, What are you going to do for me? <laughs> I mean, it was the women that went and borrowed all the jewelry from the Egyptians. The men were like, eh, I'm good. <laughs> They'd have like gold teeth and stuff like that. The women were like, no, 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 no. Everything you got from QVC in the last 20 years, put it right here. <laughs> she says, by the way, what can you do for me? And those guys looked up at her and says, oh, by the way. If you'll hang this scarlet cord in the window, and if you get your family members in your house, when we come and destroy this place called Jericho, everyone in your house will be saved. And that red cord is a type and shadow of the blood of Jesus Christ that we played over our families when disaster comes. <laughs> and the Bible says that they marched one time around Jericho one time a day and didn't say a word. On the seventh day, they marched around seven times. And on the seventh time around, they, they blew the horns and they shouted. And the Bible says the walls fell down flat. They've excavated it. It's like the earth opened up and the the walls just and the walls came tumbling down except for that one sliver of wall that's weird that's covenant that doesn't seem right that's covenant that doesn't seem fair that's favor a thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it won't come near you. If God can do that with a red rope as a type and shadow of Jesus Christ to come, how much more, say much more, can God do for us 
with the real blood of Jesus being held in the heavenly mercy seat of God and me taking my mouth and my heart and applying it by faith, how much more will my house, my family, my ministry, my church stand? I'm not here to judge another man's servant. But the video I didn't get to show you today. It shows one pastor that's kind of new to Pentecost and kind of new to this thing. And God spared his building, but there was a bunch of damage. And that doesn't mean that you got faith or don't faith. That's what I'm talking about. But then they showed another guy. And he was right there in Fort Myers. Right there, his house and his church overlooks that river but separates Fort Myers and Fort Myers Beach. And they, because he has a television station and he has cameras and stuff, they showed him screaming at that storm. <laughs> and then he gets up there and puts some flip-flops on. He's walking in deep, deep water around his church and the wind's blow, blowing he goes, now, when I, go, when I come around this corner, it's going to get rough, but I'm going to talk to that storm. I don't want to talk to this wall. He turns that around that corner and goes, in the name of Jesus, I command you, you take your hand off of my house. You take your hand off of my property. You take your hand off my church. I plead the blood of Jesus over my church. <laughs> All the churches were spared, but this guy, he didn't even lose electricity. Super, okay, they got his, his generators come on. They kept, kept going, kept the air going, kept everything going. But God blessed them. God touched them. God ministered them. And every member of his church, their houses were intact and they were fine because they had a covenant with Almighty God. <laughs> it matters where you go to church and what you hear. Are you listening to me? And the good news is, God spared some other churches and they learned some stuff. Amen. Isn't it good that God protects you while you're learning? And God keeps you while you're learning? Hallelujah. Now, don't get me wrong. We're not going to start judging like this person was closer to God. We're not going there. But I, but I notice stuff. You see patterns. Amen. In Jesus' name. Would you stand up with me, please? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Get up out of your seat, please, if you would. If you can't stand very long, just we got this whole front row here of seats, all set for just stuff where me and Trish got a stack of Bibles. But if, if, if you just get up out of your seat, come stand across the front of this building. We're going to lay hands on you. We're going to plead the blood of Jesus over you. God's going to do a, some a work on the inside of us in Jesus' name. We're going to make sure that not only are we protected, but our families are protected in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah. While they're coming, do you want to add to that? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. I believe everything he said. Well, good. And I know that God protects people. I know some of you can testify to that today. That you were maybe in a mobile home. Maybe you were in a place that wasn't, you know, what the world would say, a safe place. But God still protected you. And so you can give praise to him today. Hallelujah. It works, doesn't it? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Just begin to pray over him right now. Father, we thank you for every person that stands here. We thank you, Lord, that you protected them in the storm and you protected them so they could Hallelujah. get to the place where they could believe you to protect them in the storm. We ask you, Father God, to minister life and peace to them today, to help them to understand how much you love them, that you love them as much as you love Jesus, 
that, you, that they are precious to you, that they are crowned with glory and honor because you have crowned them, not because they crowned themselves, but because you crowned them and you believe in them. And we thank you, Lord God, that you will help them to go all the way to heaven and complete their journey, that you will complete what you have started in them, Lord. And we thank you, Father God, that they live to tell a your glory. They live to tell their testimony. And we thank you for that, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Ooh, hallelujah. I want you to go with me. Just keep that microphone, Trish. You'll probably be back. I want you to go with your eye of faith. Sometimes you've got to see it in the natural so you can help understand what God's doing in the supernatural. That's why when I, have, I, I lay hands on people, I say, take a deep breath. I mean, you can't breathe in God. He's a spirit. But sometimes you got to put yourself in position to receive from the Lord in Jesus' name. I've not seen this in a long time, but right over there behind Les and Connie, it's just like God's opened up the windows of heaven. And out of the riven side of my Savior, there's a fountain of blood, a river of blood. Just like you begin to watch the, that uh, uh, sur storm surge go through the streets of Fort Myers and Fort Myers Beach and, and those other, Cape Coral and some of those. Just begin to watch as the floodgates of heaven, the blood of Jesus is unleashed at Brevard Worship Center today and flowing down this altar, drawing down the front of this building. Between that front row and this row right here is a river of the blood of the lamb. It reaches to the highest mountain. It flows to the lowest valley. It's the blood that gives me strength from day to day and it will never lose its power. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 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 You just begin to put your feet up and down right now. You're standing, hallelujah, waist deep right now in the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Some of you actually, it's like you're standing in a river. You can feel the water just rushing up against you. Hallelujah. Your left side as that fountain of blood comes with power. It comes with cleansing power. It comes with healing power. It comes with delivering power. Hallelujah. 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 Now I want you to take your right hand, watch me right now. Take your right hand like this. And I want you to just dip it down there and below your waist. Just kind of stir it around that blood real good. The life-giving blood of the lamb. The blood. Oh, hallelujah. That sanctifies the blood that cleanses. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. Now, I want you to lift that right hand up over your head. Now, I'm going to stand like I'm just standing right here in front of Les. And Les sees his family. And I want Les, just like I'm standing right here, and come put that hand right there on my head, that blood-covered hand in Jesus' name. And Les and Connie are going to begin to call out the name of their children and their grandchildren right now. Now, I'm not going to stand in front of you, but I want you to close your eye faith. Do you feel the blood on your hand by faith? Say, by faith I do. Do you see your children standing in front of you? Hallelujah. Now, right now, just begin to call their name out right now. Michelle. I plead the blood of Jesus over Michelle right now. I plead the blood of Jesus over her husband, Thomas. I plead the blood of Jesus over my grandbabies, Amy and Timmy right now. I plead the blood of Jesus right now over Hope and Joshua and wherever they are. And I declare they will finish their race. They're protected by the blood. Devil, every weapon that you formed against them, it will not prosper in the name of the Lord God, Jehovah. The blood of Jesus, I break I break every assignment against my children. I break every assignment against my wife. I break every assignment against me and my family and this ministry. By the blood of Jesus, devil, take your hands off of my children right now. Devil, take your hands off of my ministry right now. Take your hands off of my finances. Take your hands off of everything that belongs to me. In Jesus' name, Hallelujah. 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 Now take your hands and dip them both hands down that blood one more time. I feel silly. He's chosen the foolish things to confound the wise. He's chosen the weak things to confound those things that are mighty. Hallelujah. You got your, 
You got your hands covered? Now lift those blood-soaked hands and begin to worship a God that forgives. A God that's setting you free from every addiction. Set you free from every bondage. Hallelujah. The weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. The blood and your testimony. You overcome him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. And we declare right now now every addiction, every sickness and disease, all poverty and lack, we break your assignment by the blood of the covenant of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I declare as your pastor, I declare as your shepherd, you are free. <laughs> You're free in Jesus' name. You're free in Jesus. You're free in Jesus' name. You're free in Jesus' name. Woo! (laughs) Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. 